I, I appreciate the worship that was here this morning, didn't you? Wasn't it wonderful? But let me just say something to you who are here. What you need more is the word. I've been through many situations where uh, I've been distraught. Death, financial uh, things that face me. But because it wasn't my, the way you worship that made you go through, okay? It was my knowledge and my acting on the word of God that brought me through. Worship is just a result of what you know from the word. So I want, you to, I want to challenge you right now. Let me just tell you something. I, it's good to feel the presence of God. But let me just say this again. You don't have to. Okay? Okay? Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you feel God and then you'll go. Matter of fact, it says the total opposite. It says when you don't feel him, go. Okay? It says when you don't feel like it, do it. It says when you're kind of going through distraught, do it anyway. Because you're doing something not in an emotional response. And I'm not in any way saying anything. We had a great time here. But what we need to do is merge the spirit with the word. When you get that, I mean, there's a lot of prophetic things happening today. And sometimes a, lot, something, uh, a problem with the prophetic is they get it to sometimes what is pathetic and not prophetic. Amen? They get into what is uh, just more of, of what a response. Let me just tell you something. Base your life upon the word. Yes. Let me just tell you something again before I start here. And I don't know how long I'm going to start because, you know, I'm not here to keep you all day. I'm here to give you the word whenever that is. But when, John, when Jesus told, and you, maybe you didn't get this. When Jesus told his disciples to fill the water jugs with water, he wasn't just talking about, the jugs of water. He was talking about them. We are earthen vessels. Okay? And we are able to contain things. What he was telling you to do is fill yourself up with my word. Yes. Fill yourself with my word. The water in, God, in the Bible represents the word of God. Yes. When you fill yourself up with the word, then... You see, you got a part in this. You have a part in this. The part is you have to do something and then God will do something. Too much of the church is expecting God to do what you're supposed to be doing. And get me, let me just tell you something. God will not do your part. God will not make you down and, you know, get down and study. God will not make you get down and pray. God will not make you come to church. God will not make you give. God will not make you do, even get saved. Matter of fact, God will give you the privilege of your own free will to go to hell. He doesn't want you to go there. But you have to do your part and fill yourself up to overflowing. And when you come into the presence of Jesus, then he can take the word and turn it into Holy Ghost wine. The wine represents the Holy Spirit. And that means there's a move of your life that is oh, so ecstatic, so overwhelming, that I don't care what situation you face, and plenty of, I, play, I've, I face plenty of situations of being the head of the church. And I want to encourage you, if you really want a move of God, get into the Word, start obeying the Word, and then everything else stems from that. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what we have to understand. Hallelujah. So I'm going to start training you more in the Word. If you don't have these, this is your outline. I want you to start using that at the end of the service. I got five booklets of the entire message to five special people who will want that. Amen. The entire message, verbatim. Okay, does that mean I'm not extemporaneous and I'm not moved by the Holy Spirit? How many know the Holy Spirit is a whole lot smarter than, you, than we are and he can plan ahead of time more things than you think you think you can know and he can write down in detail what you can know before it even happens. Right. Hallelujah. God is way beyond where you are. Right. Way beyond where we are. So it's all here for you. I, I'm going to do that because I want you to get into the word of God. I want you to start to study to show yourself approved. See, that would cut down my counseling time a lot. Because you're now obeying the word of God and not obeying just emotional things. Because a lot of, a lot of the church today is more emotional than they are word. And this is not a rebuke. This is an encouragement to let you know that what we really need is the obedience of the word of God. To the word of God. 
and then everything else flows. Then it all works together. All things work together for the good. So are you ready for the word of God here today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to minister today on a review. You know, we've been teaching on this, and all there is is that one thing. I'm not, I'm not going to do mud slides anymore because it draws you away. You can read. How many can read here today? Until you start reading for yourself. Hallelujah. So many people are wanting to be self-fed. It's time to feed yourself. When I go out to dinner with you today, I'm not going to get next to you and say, now here's another spoonful. Let me cut that steak, piece of steak for you. Now, I'll do it for a baby, okay? But you're not a baby anymore. I said, you're not a baby anymore. I said, you're not a baby anymore. I said, you're not a baby anymore. And God expects you to do things. You know, you get to a point that you just, God expects you, God, you expect God to think for you? God's not going to think for you. You're just, you have to come to an age sometime where you're going to say, okay, God, I know what your word says. I'm going to go to church because I don't, I don't have to feel it. I just know what, that's what you say. I choose to. I choose to. And therefore, I know because I'm mature enough to know what to do. Listen, nobody clothed me today. My wife didn't put on my clothes today. Thank God. Hallelujah. I put my own clothes on. Amen. I brushed my own teeth. I put deodorant on. Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. So Holy Spirit, you lead us now. You guide us into all truth. Help us to know what the word says so that we can do what the word says. We're so thankful for the move of your spirit and the people being touched. But Lord, fill them up. Lord, I ask you to help them, to help themselves. Fill themselves up with your word, with your power, with your anointing, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to know, for the past several weeks, we have been talking about sowing and reaping. Why am I doing that? Well, because the Lord had told me at the beginning of this year that this is going to be the year of increase for this church, for you, and for your personal life. There's going to be so much increase. I don't know about you, but you need to be blessed. You need to start growing and being blessed. Just like our sister says, no one here wants to be in debt. We're not just talking about money, financial. When the word rich means, in the Bible, when you see the word rich, it means full measure. Yeah. I have full measure of everything. That doesn't mean you're a multimillionaire. You could be. God's not against that. But that means you have more than enough to be satisfied in your life and be happy. Yeah. It's called the abundant life. But it's even more than that. God knows this, and the world knows this. They practice this principle I'm about to take and tell you about. When you're blessed, then the church will be blessed. You see, the world system is already doing that. That's why they have CNN and ABC and CBS around their neck, because they're paying for it. When the church wakes up and starts to realize that we need to start getting blessed because when you get blessed, the church gets blessed. When the church gets blessed, the kingdom of God can now expand. And when the kingdom of God expands, God's power is now extended to those around you. This is a kingdom principle. This is a kingdom effort. This is not an individual effort. You are part of the army of the almighty God. My God, that's good. Because when you are blessed then, yes, sir, I don't have to feel anything. Yes, sir, if I do, that's fine. But I'm, I'm here, whatever you want me to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's when you got it. That's when you know, and then the feeling will follow. Yeah. It's, it's, listen, it's faith. It's faith in God. It's a fact in the word of God. It's faith in God, and the feelings follow. That's right. Hallelujah. So we've been talking about what is known as the law of Genesis. This is found in the first book of, the, a book of Genesis. It's called the Law of Genesis. This is where I, the way God moves. He works at seed, time, and harvest. It's the way it works. Genesis chapter 1, look at it on your outline there, is verse 11 and 12. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the, and the tree, and the fruit tree, excuse me, fruit tree, yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 12, 
And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after its kind. In other words, after the same kind. And the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw it was good. So I want you to see something there. God wants you to know there's seed. He created this thing called seed. When we look at the word, actually in the Greek, it's actually the word sperma. You know what that means. It actually has the reproductive power, creative ability, able to reproduce, able to do a job when it's assigned to it. So God wants you to know that he has done that for all of humanity, for all the world system. As a matter of fact, after Noah and the great flood, how many know that Noah was, that was the great flood? After that time, God talked to Noah and he promised that he would never judge that world again. And regarding the earth, he says in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, look at it. While the earth remains, while the earth remains, while the earth remains. I don't know about you, but I'm still on planet earth. How about you? Yeah. Are you on planet earth today? Yeah. Some of you might not be on planet earth right now. I don't know where you are, but I hope you're on planet earth. Hallelujah. Planet Pluto, you're not there. You are here. While the earth remains, this earth remains right here. Seed time, seed time, you can split that. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Listen to what it says, shall not cease. Now some of you are wondering, how do I get this thing to work for me? I'm t about to show you how everything works in the kingdom. Not some things, everything. Not some things, everything. Everything you right now, I don't care whether you're going through depressed times or good times, anytime, this is how it works. This is the way you get it out. This is the way of increase in your life. Hallelujah. This is a fixed law. This is the way that you get provision into your life. This is the way you bring increase into your life. Well, Pastor John, I've been waiting, I'm waiting, wait. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Let it not go. Trust God. How many trust God here today? God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said, and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken, and shall he not make it good? God will make what he says good. Are you, are you trusting enough to hold on till it happens? It might not happen in your time frame. We're expecting it to happen as soon as possible, but it might not happen in your time frame. It could come tomorrow. It could come next month. It could come next year. It could come in five years. Back in 1987, we believed, I put down in my journal, I'm believing for a million dollars to come into our church. That didn't happen to 2009. Well, am I after money? No, but I'm thank God we got a million dollars in 2009. Can you say amen? amen. You've got to stand firm and not give up. You've got to hold fast and hold on to what God has for you. Hallelujah. So we need to understand this is a fixed law. Matter of fact, in Mark, Mark chapter 4, 4, verse 26, it tells us that Jesus even said this. Jesus even taught this. He said this, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed in the ground. The kingdom of God, the, how many know that this is all about? Did you know right now that the message of the, of the New Testament is not salvation? That'll blow your mind. The message of the, of the New Testament is the kingdom of God. That's part of the kingdom. That's how you get into the kingdom. Jesus came and preached the kingdom. So what I'm about to teach you are kingdom principles that operate in our realm. We are kings and priests in Jesus' name. We need to learn how to rule and reign as kings so that the things that come against us will not be able to stand because of God before us. Who can be against us? The gates of hell cannot even stand against us. I said the gates of hell cannot even stand against us. I said the gates of hell cannot even stand against it. I said the gates of hell cannot even stand against it. Neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And whatever I put my hands to prospers, not because I'm so special, but because someone special lives inside of us. Hallelujah. So you have to stand firm. Stand firm. Be bold in Jesus. Be brave in Jesus. That doesn't mean you don't get down. That doesn't mean you don't get discouraged. That means, hey, man, I'm going through a hard time, but guess what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's a right attitude, not a one that's out of kilter. 
It's a right attitude towards the word. Hallelujah. So we need to understand. Let me just, just explain to you now the difference. And this is so important. If this bothers you, what I'm about to say, something is wrong with your spirit. I want to explain to you the difference between tithing and an offering or sowing seed. Okay, I want you to go this because it's so, the church is stymied here in America. Not anywhere else in the world. Matter of fact, there's an explosion of power everywhere else in the world. Isn't that sad? We, we have this facade in the church. We have this show in the church in America. We got this show that come see the show. Let me just tell you something. I'm tired of the show. I want God to show. Hallelujah. I want to see the Lord. And so we need to understand how do we activate? How do we activate ourselves to be in that? Well, the difference is knowing what the Bible says about things. Knowing what the Bible says about things. Knowing what the Bible says about things. Once you get to know what the Bible says about that, listen, you're not going to be confused. You're not going to be, you're going to not settle for counterfeits. You're not going to settle for second best because you'll know what's best because you know what the word says. Hallelujah. There is a difference. The difference is basically that the tithe is that 10% of your income that it should be given to the local church. Again, if this hurts you, stay it from a spirit of, of openness here. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to preach money. I'm not ma about your money. I don't, that's not my objective. I'm trying to teach you kingdom principles here. That's the objective. Once you understand how to work in the kingdom, you can do everything for God. You can do anything for God. So we need to understand that tithe belongs to the church, and it strictly deals with money when it deals with tithe. And it can't be exchanged for any kind of thing like your time or your talent. When it comes to your tithe, that means your income. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first, first and best part or your tithe of all your income. Let me just stop there. If you look up the definition of income there, it means this, money received through work or investment. It has to be has in relationship to your finance. There's a strong tie between a person's heart with money and God. There's a strong tie, so much so that God even spent a lot of time, Jesus spent a lot of time talking about it. He says, you cannot serve God in mammon because they're so close to that. Your money is tied to your heart. And if this wrenches your heart, then question yourself as, why is this question myself? Why is this bothering me? It shouldn't bother you at all. Hallelujah. I said, it shouldn't bother you at all. Verse 10 says, then after you do that, your barns will be filled and your vats will be overflow with fresh flour. So tithing and, and it, all, it, it does a lot of things here. Number one, it does this. It honors God. I don't know about you, but we have lost honor to God. We come in any way we please and think God's all right. Listen, just because you worship doesn't mean God accepts it. In the Old Testament, he said, I'd rather see you shut down the temple than the way you're doing things. And sometimes God doesn't understand. Listen, God doesn't always accept the way we worship in our life. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about our life. Yeah. Hallelujah. We have not honored him. That means deep respect. Lord, I don't want to offend you. Yeah. And it even tells us that the tithe is holy. Did you? We've lost the meaning of that word. We've lost the meaning of that word so much that nothing's holy anymore. It's whatever you think it is. No, 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 no. When you stand before the holy God, he's holy. Matter of fact, when Peter saw Jesus walking on the bottom, he jumped off the, the ship. He, he said, Lord, I'm not worthy. There, something happens to you when you come into true holiness. And you see God as he really is. You can't even stand there because you see yourself as who you are. And I don't know about you, but without Christ, all we are is sinners. Hmm. That's one thing it does. Number two, it supports the operation of the church, the church to go forward. We're able to help Nigeria. We're able to help DR. We're able to help people each week. We're able to keep this thing on so you can come and have a good time and take a break from your kids. Come on now. That's right. We know you. <laughs> Number three, the tithe protects you and your seed you sow. 
your offering. It, it protects it. The seeds you sow. As a matter of fact, I love this. He'll rebuke the devourer for your sake, according to Malachi. One of the best teachers in this room is Brother Bill Coleman, right over there. Raise your hand, Bill. Go ahead. I, he's one of the best teachers. He, he just has revelation come out of him. We were speaking the other day. And he just revealed to me something. He said, Pastor John, I love you, Bill. I'm just going to sit and I'm going to brag on you. He says, Pastor John, that's Old Testament. He says, don't you understand? They couldn't rebuke the devil back then. But now because you're in Christ, you have authority over the devils. And you can also, with Jesus, say, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, Satan. Matter of fact, in a couple of weeks after Easter, I'll teach you on how to bind up the devil and release your angels to bring in your harvest. When it, you see, we're real good at sowing, but we're real bad about reaping. We don't know how to reap. We don't know how to bring. No harvest out there walks into the barn by itself. No harvest out there walks into the... And what that means is there's many opportunities that God has exposed you to and, and showed you. One of the things God showed to me, he says, John, I'm going to give you an opportunity to start writing books. He said, that'll be an opportunity for you to bring increase. You see, opportunities come by ways of open doors. Open doors, but you're going to have to walk into them and you're going to have to go get it and bring it in. Harvest time is one of the most expensive times of the year. They get the combines out there in there from sundown, sun up to sundown. They're, they're paying people to harvest it. There's a lot of oil used and gasoline. Let me just tell you something. We need to be blessed to bring in the harvest. Huh. Hallelujah. Let me just tell you something. We are blessed here today. I said we are blessed. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30 says, One-tenth or tithe of what comes from the land, whether grain or free, fruit, is holy and belongs and belongs and belongs and belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. How many love Jesus? Let me just say this. He's a show me God. He doesn't believe a word you say and believes everything you do. Because he's a show me God. He, if you don't show him, then he doesn't know. He just thinks you're, you know, they come near to them with his lips, their lips, but their heart is far from them. That's how he rebuked the, 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 the Pharisees. He says, their, their lips, oh, we love you, we love you, we love you. But their heart, let's take some of that money for ourselves. Let's take some of that stuff for me. Let's live a little bit more for us. Let me just tell you something. We need help. Say amen. amen. I, if I, I thank God he loves us so much. Yes. Because we're all screw-ups. We're all messed up. We all fail. I feel. Fail. And feel. Amen. <laughs> but thank God. He loves us. I, I get so discouraged with myself, but God, let me just tell you something. You're going to screw up sometimes, but thank God he's there to help you up. Say amen. amen. When you screw up, God will help you up. Say amen. amen. I said when you screw up, God will help you up. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that God wants us to know this, and we need to understand that the tithe it will keep you where you are financially. It won't bring increase. It will keep you at that same level. But that increase comes when you start sowing seed. Look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse again. It says, it says, it says then, after, then after you tithe, then your, listen what it says, then your barns. Then whose barns? Your barns. Not the storehouse. The storehouse is the church. After you tithe, then after you do that, then your barns. Not the storehouse of the church. Your barns. Yourself. Listen, that's you. That means this. You won't reap a harvest increase until you start tithing. That's why some of you are not blessed in certain areas if you're not. I mean, I'll tell you right now, it's all about what we understand here. This is kingdom principle. 
And it's not a curse that we're talking about. We're talking about how to activate the blessings of God. Did you know they're all conditional? They're all conditional, and we need to understand. Listen, I know, I know myself. I get all weary and well-doing sometimes. I have to get up myself and say, listen, God, John, get up, and you can't just lay around like this. You have to do what I say. There's many a times I'll get up in the morning, and I, I, I might not feel like going to prayer, and I might I talk to my. If I went by my body, I wouldn't even be standing up here right now. Because just a few minutes ago, I'm over there. Boy, I'm nervous. I don't feel like I want to do this. You know, if I went by my body, I would need your prayer. But I don't go by my body. I go by my spirit. And my spirit is strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. I go by what saith the Lord, not what saith the flesh. Yes. Matter of fact, let me just say this. You don't have to deny yourself. Yourself is good. What you need to start denying is your flesh. Yes. I said your flesh. Yes. Your flesh is the problem, not self. Self has been born again. You're a good person in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. It's not denying self. It's denying the flesh. We, we, that's how we refer to that. I just wanted to be more specific. And so God wants you to understand that. We need to understand what God is doing. Hallelujah. God wants you to understand that. So why should we tithe? Why would we want to do such a thing? Why would you want to give away to a church or somebody 10% of your income? Why would you want to do something like that? Well, you give a whole lot more away to the government than you do to God. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And here's why. The tithe was not put in place because of God. The tithe was put into place for you. God doesn't need anything. God has no need. If God had a need, he wouldn't be God. I said if God had a need, he wouldn't be God. God wants you to participate in him. God wants you to enjoy the blessings of him. So that's what he does. He expects you to participate. Thus, tithing teaches us how to keep God first. It teaches us how to not be selfish. You see, selfish people make good people. They make better spouses. They make better friends. They make better relatives. They make better employees. They make better employers. They make better believers because they're not selfish. They're givers. They want to give. They understand this belongs to God. All I'm here is to serve God. How many really love God with all their heart? Then understand this is a part of your nature. This is a part of who you are. This is a part of what I am. This is a part of what we do in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Will somebody say amen when you want me to stop? Say amen. But I want to go on as long as we can because I love you in the Lord in Jesus' name. The Bible even teaches us that he makes us better. Psalm 35 verse 27 says, Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure, pleasure in the prosperity of a servant. God wants you blessed. You, you know why? Again, let me reiterate. He gives you the power to create that he may establish his covenant. God has more in mind than just you. He has others, and the others are not here yet. In order to get the others in, we need to expand the kingdom. I said we need to expand the kingdom. You don't get that. We need to expand the kingdom. We have to have outreach. We need to get on all the social networks, all of them. We need to get on all the way so that people say, we need to enhance the gospel and spread the gospel. And it takes money to do that. It takes increase to do that. It does. It's not just cheap. Harvest is expensive. Ask any farmer. Ask any farmer. Harvest is expensive for you. If you want to increase, it's going to cost you. I said, if you want to increase, it's going to cost you. You didn't get that. If you want to invest, invest in yourself, and you'll and better yourself, and you'll better your situation. It costs, though. It costs me to go to school. It cost me to go to master's degree. It cost me to get my doctor's degree. It cost me to get some time with God. It cost me. But let me just tell you, the benefits are out of this world. Out of this world. And God wants you to know how great that is. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us when you give, then your barns will be full. There has to be a lifestyle change then. Lifestyle change. Lifestyle change. Say that. Lifestyle change. A lifestyle that says, Lord, I love you. I'm going to start dropping off these things that don't love you in my life. How many hate some things that they do in the flesh? Let me see your hands. Then start dropping them off. Start walking away from it. 
It's not worth it. I said, it's not worth it. It's not worth to go into those things. I mean, we, after so many years of doing so many stupid things, you finally get some sense. If I can talk to you now when you're younger, please stop doing stupid things. Amen. Amen. Just start obeying God and doing what he wants and understanding. So let's look at how you sow your, for your harvest. One of the things is sure, you can't harvest or get a harvest without planting seed. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, so shall he reap. The problem with the church is they're not expecting. When you get pregnant, ladies, you're expecting something to happen. You're expecting a baby to come because a seed has been planted inside of you, and you're now expecting. It takes some time to get that baby to come out. Listen, seed, time, and harvest. We need to understand, but if you don't plant some seed, nothing happens. Jesus even said, give and it shall be given unto you. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. That's a principle. And when you start giving and when you start increasing and start seeing increase, I don't know about you, but that makes me excited. How about you? When I start seeing something happen in my life, man, that makes me, I want to see things work. How many are tired of seeing things not working in their life? I want to see something work. I want to see God move in my life and do something for the glory of God. So when we sow seeds, it's not just, listen, it's again, it's above your tithe. It's above and beyond. You can increase. If you follow every person that's wealthy today, and I'm not talking about wealth only. Matter of fact, I'm not. But if you follow them, they started to increase when they start doing more. Every one of them knew that principle. It's a principle that's, that's beyond just the spiritual. It's in the natural. So you've got to learn how to give your time, your talent, your effort, your love. If you want healing, go lay your hands on somebody to be healed. I said, if you want to be healed, go lay somebody. If you have a problem, thank God this past week we had Sister Kathy Wall. Kathy Wall, what's her name? Kathy, Kathy Wall. God bless her. Aren't you glad that she's healed today? Hallelujah. She had a, they found a mass in her right lung. They took some up biopsy of it, and they found it out that it wasn't cancer, thank God, because the church was praying. Let me just tell you why. Another thing, they're givers, not just in their finances, but in their life. Now, how many know that God takes care of his own? Yeah. How many thank God for healing? Yeah. Thank God for that. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So you need to understand their seed, time, and harvest. Sow your time. Sow your time, wherever you are. One of the hardest things to do is to help people. It really is. But instead of just helping people with the mindset of this is drudgery, I'm not going to do it. Here, I'm going to say this way. Lord, I'm sowing my time. I'm going to love this person because I love you. And I know when I love them, you're going to love me back and you're going to bless me too. But you know what? The Bible says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you start rewarding others and blessing others, God's going to bless you. I said when you start blessing others, God's going to bless you. Hallelujah. How many praise God for that? I want you to lift your hands right now because I feel a break in the spirit right here. Okay? I'm going to obey the Lord. Holy Spirit, there are people right here right now that need to hear from you. Lord God, there's a touch that they need. Lord, there needs to be a breakthrough in the spirit. A breakthrough in the things of God. Lord God, I'm speaking that you show us now. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show us. Right now, just wait a minute. Just lift your hands, keep them up there, and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody may have a word right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And here's what the Lord says. Listen, what are you going to do when nothing happens the way you want? What are you going to do when nothing happens the way you feel? 
What are you going to do when everything around you looks like it's not going anywhere? How will you react, says the Lord? What will you do as you plant your seed and know that you love me? And also know that I'll bless you. What are you going to do in the time between the seed and the harvest? What are you going to do when the feelings don't feel so good? Are you going to still love me? Are you going to still serve me? Are you still going to come forth and give me your best? The Lord is asking you, what are you going to do? We already know what God's going to do. We already know that he loves us and he never will give up on us. But the Lord says, I see many of my people give up too soon. I see many of them falter and give in to their pressure of the world. And then they start to speak things that are not from me. They start to say things like, I don't think this is working. I don't feel like it, it, like it anymore. I don't know if I want to go that way. And the Lord says to you, have I not said in my word, let the weak say, I am strong? Have I not said in my word that whatever you say out of your mouth will come to pass? Have I not said in my word that life and death are in the power of your tongue? Oh, yes, I know you go through problems. Oh, yes, I know you go through situations. But how are you reacting to those situations? I'm not asking for something false, says the Lord. Not some hype, says the Lord. I'm asking for honesty in me. Honesty in truth. Are you standing up when you can't feel like you're standing? Are you praying up when you don't feel like praying? Are you giving up when you don't feel like giving? Are you given my, your best, says the Lord? Are you given your best? I want your head bowed right now. The Lord just interrupted the message to give you that message. Because some of you right now have been on the verge of just giving up, giving in. You heard this teaching, but it might be too much for you right now to the point that I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I want that. I just like it the way I got it. God says there's so much more. God says there's more for you. God says I can take you out of you. You haven't seen anything yet, says the Lord. I want to show you something that's beyond where you are, beyond what you have, beyond what you're capable of doing on your own. For I can do all things through you, says the Lord. It's not you, it's me and you. I said it's not you, it's me and you, says the Lord. So if you would just let me be me and you, wow. If you would just let me be me and you, I'll show you things that you've never seen. I'll take you to places you've never been. I'll help you do things that you never could do. I'll raise you. Some of you think you're not too smart. Well, let me just tell you something. I will give you wisdom beyond your age. I will give you knowledge beyond what you have. I will give you an anointing beyond what you thought possible. I will put my spirit upon you. And when others see that spirit, it'll be so interesting to them. They'll say, how is it that you have done such a thing? And then now you can tell them because I'm going to give words in your mouth, says the Lord, that will be filled with my power, filled with my anointing. And when you speak, it won't be John, it won't be Susie, it won't be Mary, it won't be Harry. It'll be my words coming out of your mouth that will break the yoke and destroy everything that has been inside you. Mm. And I'm going to continue. For if we want more, says the Lord, you have to come and get it. Come and dine. Come and dine. I'm calling you to come and dine with me. Come and be hungry. I'm calling for the hungry spirits to come up. I'm calling for the hungry hearts that will not relent. The warriors that I'm looking for. The soldiers of the living God. The sons of Sebaoth. The sons of Sebaoth. The sons of Sebaoth the sons of the armies of the Lord. I'm calling them forth to come forth out of their weakness into my strength. Mm. 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 Just lift your hands all over this place.